Well, I've said it many times, but one of our primary goals as a worship leader is to try to identify and eliminate as many of the distractions as possible. And then, through the vehicle of music, try to create an environment that makes it easy for people to connect with God. That's our goal. God is our goal. Not the songs aren't our goal. Being a really cool band isn't our goal. God is our goal. So everything we do is filtered through that idea of trying to connect with the Lord. And music happens to be a very powerful way to do that, to, to, to involve our emotions and our wills and our minds. And so that's why we use that vehicle. God, it's a gift from the Lord. But remember, God is the goal. Okay, one of the first things we're going to look at in regards to playing as a worship team, as a worship band, is one of the things I see a lot in, in uh, beginning worship teams is that everybody's playing a lot. Everybody comes in playing their instrument full on instead of learning to listen to one another, learning to kind of pull back and leave space in the music. You know, the space and the rests in music are just as important as the notes. You know, it's, it's those pauses and that space that, that gives, uh, that makes the notes valuable, that makes them mean more. So, you know, let's just take a scenario, you know, a worship, a worship leader used to playing guitar in his church for a couple years. He's leading worship, praying for more musicians to come into his band. And then one glad day, you know, he's, he's used to playing the bass part. And he also has to kind of keep the rhythm going and he's got to keep this stuff up here because he's trying to provide as much music as possible. And one glad day, a bass player shows up and he's got a heart for the Lord. He has some talent, he shows up at practice. All of a sudden we start adding the bass player. Well then immediately as a guitar player, I can start laying off some of those bass notes. In fact, since he's playing those bass notes, I might just go up high here a little bit. Mm, yes, Lord, we lift your name on high. We bless your name. See, I don't have the I don't have the pressure of trying to provide all that bass stuff. And let's say like a few weeks later, a keyboard player shows up. He's got a heart for the Lord. And we're like, man, praise God. We practice a little bit. All of a sudden, he joins the band. And instead of him playing where I'm playing, he's going to play up a little higher. So all of a sudden, listen to this. He's going to be way up here now. Yeah. And he doesn't have to play any bass notes hardly because we've already got a bass player. A lot of keyboard players, they're used to doing the bass, the rhythm, the chords. But since we have a bass player, Jason can just sit on his left hand. Let's just stop for a minute and talk about what's happening here. See, it's like picture a pizza pie. And when you're all by yourself, you're the whole pie. You're the rhythm. You're, the, you're everything. You're the chords, you're the melody, you're trying to provide all the feel. But as soon as you start adding other instruments, then I begin to pull back as a guitar player, keyboard player, instead of having to be real busy, you know, like a, oh, you know, guys that are used to, in a traditional church setting many times, are used to having to play all the bass, all the accompaniment up here. But to learn how to pull back as you add more players. So as you add more players, each player reduces the amount of activity that they're that they're playing with. So um, that's one thing that's happening. Another thing that's happening is picture on your stereo you have the bass, the mid-range, and the treble. Okay, and a lot of times when a guitar player is playing the chords to a song. A, a keyboardist many times will end up playing in that same octave range, like in this mid-range area. So see that as the bass player plays down here, 
the guitars, I'm kind of in the mid-range. And just go ahead and Jason, play like in the more the mid-range. Instead of playing there. See, him and I are already, we're like in the same place. And there's nobody up here up high. So watch, I'm going to go up high. Since, I, since he's there, I'm going to go up high. Here we go. You hear that? You hear how that spreads out the sound a little bit? Now I'm going to switch with him. I'm going to go down low in the mid-range. And the keyboard player is going to go up high. You hear that? Try to feel that. What a difference that makes. Okay. And, and that's good music. That's good music is when you're paying attention to the, the separation, the bass, the mids, the treble. And when each player is kind of playing off each other, being sensitive, not trying to be a hog and be like, oh yeah, well, I can, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna play more and I'm gonna be busier than you. But it's like, oh, it's cool. Oh yeah, it's a nice piano thing. And it, it may make me just wanna go like, dun, 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 while he's playing that. Two, three, four. Now here's what'll happen now. Now let's say a month later, we get a guy finally that's got a heart for the Lord and he can play drums. And even though that like, it could potentially freak out some of the people in our church. We're going to take this step and add a drummer, which is what we did many years ago. And that was like a big deal, and some people freaked out. But, you know, this guy Carl, he's got a good heart, and he's not going to come in the first day and just blow people away. You know, we're going to kind of like slowly move into this thing. I know some of you are in the midst of a transition. You, you, you come from a very traditional church, and you're transitioning from sort of more traditional to more of a contemporary or more modern setting or style. So um, here's what happens when we add some rhythm. Again, as soon as we add some rhythm, I can back off as a guitar player from having to keep that thing going. So let's just try that simple progression we're doing. One, two, three, four. I cut back my activity as a guitar player because Carl's he's, he's providing that subdivision hear that so as a guitar player I can just kind of go and Jason's playing little nice melodies up an octave higher than I am Don's down there keeping the low end happening we, and we're just keeping it nice and light Pretend that's the verse, and here comes the chorus. Pretend it's the same progression. All we're going to do is get a little stronger now. Now we add a little more activity. Adding some more activity. We're all strumming, playing a little bit harder. Yes, we lift your name. We bless your name. Here comes the verse again. We will pull back a little bit. Pretend that's the verse. Mm, we lift your name. We bless your name. You are worthy of our praise. Good. That's good, guys. That's a good, good example. So as a bass player, uh, you can do a great job playing bass without playing anything complex. In fact, you're probably going to do a better job if you don't attempt to play something complex. You're going to please uh, the worship leader. You're going to serve the song better in most cases by playing simply. And if you're trying to uh, lock in with the kick drum, 90% of the time, that's all you need to do. When I'm approaching a song, trying to decide how I'm going to play, how we're going to approach it, uh, I don't see myself as a bass player, but as an arranger. I'm kind of a co-arranger with the rest of the guys in the band, uh, trying to build a tune, you know. So if it's starting, uh, you know, kind of as a down tune, I'm going to play less, longer notes, maybe not at all, as the tune builds, you know, into a, a bigger chorus, I'm going to get down lower and really provide the support by playing low. So pay attention to CDs as you listen. How do they make a song go from a soft, gentle beginning into a powerful chorus.
like him, the lion and the lamb, seated on the throne. The mountains bow down, every ocean roars to the Lord of of the sun until the end of every day praise out of night all the nations of the earth all the angels and the saints sing praise who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the Uh, thinking of myself as an arranger has become a big part of just being a musician in general. I think every musician really needs to think that way, and drummers especially, because here again, a drummer is creating this foundational part of the band. You're the one kind of controlling the energy of the group. So I uh, always think of my parts in terms of the sections, like what am I going to do in an intro? Uh, is it a big dynamic or is it starting soft? Uh, then the next section is coming. How am I going to set up a verse? So I'm very careful, like, okay, this verse is going to go like this, and I play it that same way for eight bars or 16 bars, whatever a verse is. And then, okay, how am I going to transition from that into a chorus? Uh, is it a big fill? Do I need a big drum fill to lead the band in? Or did, you know, does the worship leader want it to be just, bam, hit the downbeat harder and change the feel? So uh, on my charts, you'll see a lot of scribbling. Uh, especially when it's new music, especially for recording sessions or we're out doing new tours. Uh, and I am a believer in taking a lot of notes. So don't be afraid to do that. Take your lyric sheet or a chord chart or whatever you're using and uh, just put a lot of reminders in there about, about how you're going to build the song. And then uh, make note of all, any changes that are in there, just every little reminder that you need. And. Uh, uh, it'll be a good way to keep the structure of the song consistent every time. As we lift up your name, let your fire fall. Send your wind and your rain. On your wings of love, pour out, pour out from heaven your passion and presence. Bring down your burning desire. Revival fire fall. Revival fire fall. You'll fall on us here with the power of. Your spirit, Father, let revival fire fall. Revival fire fall. Revival fire fall. Let the flame consume us with hearts ablaze for Jesus. Father, let revival fire fall. As we lift up your name. Okay, so here's what I see happen a lot of times. That with an inexperienced band, typically everybody's playing full on. Nobody's really listening to one another. And so the beginning of the song, the verse of the song, the chorus of the song, and then back to the verse, it all just sounds the same. There's not a sense of, of starting on this journey and taking a little walk and building and building and building. And then finally the chorus is like big. And then it kind of comes back down for the verse. And music should feel like this. You know, every, every good movie, every good book, every good story, every good song has this sense of dynamic happening. There's this, there's this we're, we're building, we're building, we're building, and then there's this release. And we kind of come back down the mountain. And then we're kind of walking back up the mountain, walking back up the mountain. And it's getting building, building, building. And then we come back down the mountain. And that's, that's what makes music emotional and interesting 
And that's what we, we need to just pay attention to that. When we're, when we're putting a song together, putting a chorus together, and we're practicing in our, in our practice times as a band, we need to plot it out. We need to think about, okay, on the intro, is this a guitar-dominant song or is this a piano-dominant song or guitar-driven song or piano-driven song? And, and go ahead and let that instrument kind of lead out. And every, all the other instruments will kind of submit to that instrument, if you will, and kind of play around it. But let, let one instrument be a little bit more driving. And I, I'm saying guitar and piano, but sometimes it may be even a rhythm thing. Maybe the rhythm is kind of the, the driving thing, and everybody kind of adds, adds a little bit. So just, why don't we d just do an example of how not to do it? You know, let, let's just, just for fun, let's, um, and this is going to be hard because these are good musicians, but you know what I mean? Try to, let's do like above all, let's try that like uh, uh, right at the top, but just be full on. Now, and this is the way I hear this sometimes when I'm at churches. <laughs> Put a capo on. Let's try this. One, two, three. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, crucified. Now, the problem is it, it kind of sounds cool, like it's like this punk alternative thing, you know? So it's hard not to even like that. I mean, it's like, but typically, generally, in the worship, you know, on Sunday morning with a mixed generational crowd, you know, we're talking about, you know, when we, we've talked about this earlier, when we lead worship, we're not just trying to lead the 25-year-olds or just the 30 to 40-year-olds. I mean, we always want to come with an attitude of serving the entire body of Christ. You want to come with an attitude of like it's a family meal and, and you want to make sure there's hot dogs for the kids and there's Brussels sprouts and there's sauerkraut and there's, you know, ham and roast beef. You know, you want to make sure that there's something for everyone. So, again, let's, let's like, we're, we're trying to make music that sort of appeals cross-generationally. So. so let's just try to do that right. And, I, and above all, in this case, let's say it's a piano-driven song. So we're going to map it out. Just take a few extra minutes before you start a song and map it out and say, okay, Jason, why don't you start the tune off? And I'm just going to not even play in the beginning of it. And, uh, and then maybe Don, the bass player, will probably like kind of just sneaking up high. I'm just going to let them do what they do because they do it well. And just kind of pay attention, if you can, to what each instrument is doing and how the song begins to build to the chorus. So let's just try this together. Jason. Thought of 
to a close. Excellent, guys. Again, I hope you, you know, you can rewind and kind of listen again, but notice how it started off piano, just real intimate since it, it, the song calls for that. And then Don, the bass player, just begins to, you know, begin to play. Not a lot. He's not real busy. He's just playing whole notes, just letting them ring out. And then Ken, the electric guitar, just begins to do little volume swell things, just little ethereal things. Uh, Carl on the drums, playing little cymbal things and didn't come in with a full groove until the chorus. And then when he did come in, boom, gah, the boom, gah, you can just feel the song pick up on the verse. And it just, you know, makes you stand a little taller. And it's these little things that inspire our people to worship. You know, it's, they don't quite know. It's like a combination, the anointing of God. I mean, that has to be there. But there's, there's a lot of little musical things that we can do that contribute to inspiring people's hearts towards the Lord. Just kind of as an exercise, take, take four or five of your favorite worship courses and take the CD and, and actually listen to how the song starts off, how it builds, and how it does this. And while it does this, notice that the tempo is not doing this. Okay, the tempo is nice and solid. It's just steady. Everybody's feeling that the timing, feeling the tempo just be straight and, and consistent. So you, you got your dynamics kind of doing this. In fact, if you're at home watching this, you know, just with your left hand, just do this. Say, man, this is the tempo. The tempo needs to be doing this. But the, but the dynamics need to be doing this. And go, go over and stand in front of a mirror and just kind of look at yourself and do that. And let that just be a reminder to your worship team. Say, man, guys, we got to get some emotion going in our, in our music, we got to get some highs and bring it down and build it back up again. But let's make sure our tempo doesn't do that. In fact, just, just as we kind of bring this segment to a close, let's just do it bad. Um, let's do like um, shout to the Lord. It's classic, you know, and kind of speed up on the chorus and then kind of slow down on the verse. And this is classic, especially singers, you know, they, they get all excited and want to like go faster and so everybody needs to be working, you know. We're going to get on. We're going to talk about that in a second, a little metronome thing. But uh, my Jesus, my shelter, my comfort, Lord, there is none. All of my days, I want to pray, never cease to worship. We got all excited. Get quiet, my Jesus. Now that is bad. That is bad. So don't play that for your friends and say, check this band out, because that was bad. And so make sure your band doesn't sound like that, because that ain't happening. So practice that. Practice making sure that tempo, when it gets exciting, let's just do that. Never cease to worship and let it get big. But hold, pull back on the reins like you're pulling back with a horse. Like, whoa. Sometimes I'll even look at my singer sometimes and go like, when, when I know they're about to jump the gun and I kind of do this. I'm serious. I kind of like, a, like, whoa, guys, pull back. Hold on. So let's just um, never cease to worship. Jesus.
hopefully that felt a little better. That makes sense. Again, practice those things, guys. Take, take four or five songs in the next few weeks and practice at your rehearsal, trying to keep the dynamics strong and yet keep the tempo right on. Uh, so a great way to practice groove is to practice with a metronome, but instead of on every beat, practice with the metronome on two and four. So if here's time, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, boom, 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 boom. So what that does is it's not spoon feeding you every click, it's kind of making you, it's relying on you to provide where the downbeat's gonna be. And in doing that, it helps you learn where to place a beat to make it feel good against the backbeat. Uh, the mechanics of like zeroing in your sense of time is the constant practice of working with machinery. You know, a metronome, a drum machine, sequences, anything like that. Um, I'm a big proponent of working with CDs, but that can be a bit of a liar. And I always tell students that CDs will cover a multitude of your flaws. So it, it's a bit of a, you know, it's a lie in the sense that the CD's feeling really good, and even if you're not feeling good, you're not aware of it. Uh, so it's better to actually work with a drum machine or a metronome, where here you are, you know, open bare to like just the sound of a click playing along, and you're playing your little grooves and fill ideas over a straight click, and determining how that feels. It's also really good to record that time. So uh, that's been very helpful through the years and it's something I keep doing. It, you never get done doing that. It's, uh, it's sort of like an athlete is always in training if they want to be at the top of their game.
tonight every song of praise, every stomping foot, every clapping hand, every swaying body, every dancing foot, every prayer of thanks, it's all for you, Lord. Every bass lick, every drum hit, every guitar play, it's all for you. Just a, here's a suggestion to learn some of these arrangement ideas. Basically, what we're talking about is how to arrange a song. Have a listening party. You know, have everybody from your worship team come over to your house some Friday night and, and take out 10 of, the, 10 of your favorite songs, you know, worship team songs, and listen to them on a CD and have everybody sit there with a pad and a pen and just write out, like, what their part is doing. Have them really learn to listen analytically you know, what is the bass player doing? Oh, he's playing up high on the, in the intro and the first verse and then on the chorus. Then he went down low and he's much busier now on the chorus. You know, what's the keyboard player doing? Wow, he only played like two notes up top. Or he's just playing a little pad. And then here comes the chorus and then he's down in the meat part of the keyboard. Um, so it's really helpful. What's the electric guitar player doing? You know, all of a sudden, you know, you've got this band thing going and one day, you know, you're blessed with this electric guitar guy that comes along and, and, you know, he's not some Eddie Van Halen wannabe, and he's not some show-off that, like, wants to, like... You know, he actually has, like, learned to just submit his guitar playing to the song. You know, that's the thing we all have to do as musicians, is not, you know, be egomaniacs. Just because we're on a stage here doesn't mean anything. You know, our heart in a worship team and our attitude is we're serving the congregation, man. We're... Our master, Jesus, was the servant of servants. And he said, if you want to be great in God's kingdom, be a servant. So our attitude should always be, what can we do to inspire worship in the people that we're serving? And every musical choice that we make should be based on that. You know, what is going to help inspire this, this guy, Fred, who maybe has six kids and, you know, he coaches Little League and he's not a professional musician, but on Sunday mornings he loves to sing out to the Lord. That's the guy, you know, that we're serving. We're trying to help him. We're not playing for our musical friends. We're not trying to be cool. We're not trying to, you know, get people to notice us, man. We got to just deal with that all the time. Keep that thing, that ego thing way down here. Just constantly be aware of that. Constantly talk about preferring one another on your team. And I'm getting off on a tangent, but again, you could have the best musicians in the world. You could have the Tonight Show band at your church, but if, if they don't have a submitted heart to the Lord, if they don't have a heart that is growing in their knowledge of the Lord and their awareness and understanding of worshiping God 24-7 in their relationship with Him, if they're not growing in their love for the people that you serve week after week in your church, then you know what? I guarantee if you had the Tonight Show band in your church, it'd be kind of fun for a couple weeks but after a while, you'd kind of go, something smells funny in here. Something smells kind of funny, you know. 
It's just like the smell of flesh and showing off and being cool. And, and that's cool. That's the world thing. And sometimes on a Friday night rehearsal, have fun, man. We got to have fun and enjoy our instruments. And even on a Sunday morning, but there's just a difference in heart attitude. At the same time, I look at my role as kind of being a co-leader. And that's not like trying to gain any glory for what I do, but I don't take the job as a job. It's not just the gig. I'm not just kind of like, you know, hitting some instrument. I'm really ministering to the Lord like the worship leader. And uh, that's kind of brought a whole new dimension of how I think about uh, playing with the worship team, working with the band. Um, and, you know, I let all of the musical stuff kind of relate to that, the flowing of a song. When it's really structured and there's the discipline of playing the song well and playing it to a click or a sequence, I want it to feel good, I want it to be musically exciting. But I'm also singing the song with the worship leader. And then, uh, of course, there's always the moments where there's that time after a song where you're just in this moment of a Selah, where you're just meditating on what has just happened in the presence of the Lord. And many times for me, the reaction is musical. Like I start decorating things on the cymbals with mallets, or brushes, and then I'll reach over and grab like a shaker and do a little spin or some chimes. And it's always an emotional reaction for me more than it is a musical thing. I mean, it's being translated into music, but it's really coming out of the heart. And I always tell players, like, if you're thinking of like, how can I be cool right now? Don't do that. Like, don't, don't gauge it according to the cool factor or trying to be hip or trying to impress, but like, think of yourself as being in the presence of God, playing your instrument, trying to please Him, and to imagine the look on the Lord's face when He's hearing this music come out of your soul to His heart.
thanks, our gratitude for your goodness and your kindness, Lord, towards us. Let's go back to, here comes our guitar player. He's got a heart after God, and he's willing to submit to the, to the team, to, the, to the, what the song requires. And so, you know, he's not going to come in right at the top just jamming necessarily. You know, there may be a song where that's what has to happen. But let's say in this particular song, uh, we'll notice that Ken, he's probably going to do these little volume swell things and all this. Then finally on the chorus, he steps on the fuzz box and it's like, you know, and it just adds dynamics to it. So let's, uh, let's just try that. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Here we go, we're building now One.
to squash that guy. I just want to keep on going, you know. Just... But uh, I hope, uh, to me, that was a good example of kind of keeping it, keeping things kind of like percolating, percolating, but keeping it kind of held back until the chorus, boom, and then you pull it back again, and then boom. And so, again, strive for that in all the songs that you guys do. And it's invaluable to work out some common signals, some real subtle things with your worship team uh, to like when the ending of the song is coming up or maybe when you're going to redo the chorus or just little things like a little nod. I really appreciate that when we're getting near the end of a song, when, when the band guys, they're worshiping and they're playing, but they kind of have half an eye on me so I don't have to be like, hey, hey, guys, you know, and like getting their attention. All it takes sometimes is just a little not or just a look and they they pretty much know okay we're gonna do this or here comes the ending or sometimes I'll use the the neck of my guitar but it's important to kind of work out some some kind of real subtle signals I used to do this <laughs> when I to end a song and uh, I remember my pastor saying that, that's a little funny you know when you do that it's kind of like <sighs> so I don't do that anymore yeah sometimes when I get to the end of a song and I just feel the strong urge to pray, you know, I'm just feeling maybe something that was said in the song and the response of the crowd and I just sense something's happening in the spirit and I, man, I just want to focus and, and kind of draw out of my heart something that I'm sensing from the Lord, you know, to, to pray that out and, um, you know, again, I'll, I'll kind of like look over my piano player, maybe just do this thing, you know kind of a signal like keep playing, you know, so that I can kind of let go. As much as I've been doing it over, you know, playing and singing, I still find at times that I just don't want the distraction of even trying to play something underneath, but to just be able to let go and say, God, we just press into you and we, we just focus our hearts upon you and, and, you know, and just that kind of a thing, knowing that there's some kind of a musical bed underneath being supplied by the keyboardist or the other guitarist. So again, it's working out some kind of subtle signal that lets the band know, okay, keep playing here, you know, support me here, hey, I need you here. And uh, many times, I'll just kind of do that, <laughs> that, little, that little move there. So, of course, it requires the keyboard player to be paying attention and to be kind of looking like, oh, okay, there he goes. And there are certain sounds and there are certain instruments, um, parts of the instruments that you can use um, to create atmosphere, to bring people into a place of worship, or I believe that there are certain sounds, and there, are, you know, as as Paul said earlier, you can go up to the the high end of a keyboard or the high end of a, a guitar neck or a bass neck, and that gives it a different color. Same with sounds and keyboard. There are certain sounds that can that can usher people into a a new atmosphere or an emotion. Um, him, let's say I'm playing. Um, the chorus of um, How Great Thou Art. Uh... Okay, that's one thing. When I add the strings, strings is always a, a celestial sound that, that, that you think, when you hear strings, you think heavenly, you think, uh, you think atmosphere, you think sky, you think all of the things of worship, all of the things of God. You know, you, you think heavenly when you hear strings. So same song. So when you add those type of things, those different textures and those different sounds, that creates a different atmosphere. Same thing with that. Let's add the drums with, like, just on the top of the cymbals with it and see how, what, what happens with that. Okay, you hear how that creates a, a whole nother atmosphere. You use swells. It wasn't a beat, it wasn't a groove, but it was swell. So it's always good to use your imagination. What can I come up with that will, that will draw people, you know, to lift their hands, to open their mouths, to create an atmosphere that will have people um, worshiping? We're going to try a modern way of creating an atmosphere for worship at this time. Um, I have a pad here, and it's just going to build. Carl's going to come in, and the band is just going to just drop in. Um, check it out.
like him, the lion and the lamb, seated on the throne. The mountains bow down, and every ocean roars to the Lord of hosts. Now, I want to move over to the drum kit for a minute. You know, as a worship leader, I'm not a drummer, but in order to communicate with a drummer, I've got to know some things about the drum set. I've got to, I've got to be able at some point to be able to say to the drummer, hey, can you give me a kick and a snare on the, on the chorus? Or can you give me a little 16th note hi-hat thing? <laughs> you know, the one and one and a two and a three and, or give me eighth notes. And I'll say, hey, can you just give me, Carl, can you give me some eighth note type thing on the hi-hat and just kick, kick, uh, drum, and hi-hat? And then I might say, now give me a snare, bro. I'll go, go, cool. Now give me 16th note on the chorus now. Hear that? One e and a two e and a three and a four e and a. Now can you go to the? Can you give me one of these on the chorus? The, that's the uh, ride symbol. And sometimes on the chorus, you know, you're bringing it on home. So again, that's cool, Carl. Again, I don't play drums, but I just encourage you to learn what the different parts of the drum kit are and be able to communicate uh, some of your likes and dislikes to the drummer. Of course, if you have a really good drummer, you know. You shouldn't, have, you shouldn't have to be telling him everything, you know, what, what to do because a good drummer kind of knows what to do. So I just want Carl to speak a little bit about just that timing thing we talked about, keeping good time, um, keeping the dynamics nice and strong. A lot of the times what he does for me is he, he has the, the song already marked out on a uh, metronome. So anyway, you talk about it, Carl, what you do, bro. Sure. Uh, what Paul's looking for and what every worship leader and, and band leader wants is the drummer to be keeping time. And, uh, of course, all the band members should be keeping good time, but they're going to lean on the drummer for that. And I always mark at rehearsal times when Paul is going through songs like what tempos he likes. And you can get a metronome or some kind of drum machine, and you can uh, a lot of times just tap in the tempo. Uh, like when we were doing uh, Above All, you know, if he's doing a boom kind of ballad tempo and you'll hear above all the okay so as a drummer at every rehearsal I'm marking every kind of song we're doing and I practice that way I set up a drum machine or a metronome to practice with playing these songs in my head as I'm sitting at home just with myself playing drums so it works really well to get that under control and you have to control that time even though we're interacting and I need to be flexible if Paul wants to go a little faster a little slower you know, we can adjust, but he's kind of leaning on me to kind of drive the bus. Once we're kind of on the road, he wants me to keep the bus on the road. So a drummer really needs, needs to think in those terms. So you need some kind of metronome. Uh, you know, you have to have that or a drum machine. And what's really popular nowadays is using uh, something that will create drum loops, patterns that we can use to actually use in performance. And uh, at first when you're doing this, you know, don't do it in a church service if you haven't practiced it. I mean, it'll drive you crazy. So it takes a lot of practice. If it's new to you, don't get frustrated. Start and stop. You know, you might have to play four bars and start over, but start practicing with this uh, whenever you're practicing, and you'll get used to the idea. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of playing a song that we actually use a drum loop on. Um, we're going to do Trading My Sorrows. And uh, this little funky pattern you hear is, is coming out of this machine that's a basic uh, a basic small sampler and it's just going to play this loop over and over and you're hearing this in I would probably say 90 percent of contemporary worship and Christian music and things you hear on the radio we're not using it so much live all the time unless it's really musically working well I, I don't recommend it uh, that you use it on every song in worship but a couple tunes is kind of a cool thing to do and it, it'll really help your teams tighten up the sound if you get used to doing this kind of thing. So we're going to try this. One, two, three, four.
ask of you one thing that we desire and as we worship you Lord come and change our lives arise 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 take your place Right. 